The end of the Permian era. The Great Dying. An event that occurred 252 million years ago, resulting in the greatest mass extinction the planet has ever known. A vast amount of volcanic activity has caused devastating climate change and greenhouse gas effects, causing temperatures to skyrocket, ending in mass die-offs of plants and animals. Almost the entire continent of Pangaea is one massive desert, even in northern regions like Russia. Here we find one species of reptile doing its best to cling on and march through the endless sand dunes. A small herd of Scutosaurus, these heavily armored herbivores can weigh up to a ton, and their covering of scutes gives them excellent protection against large predators. This does nothing to help them against the baking sun, however. This land of sand and rock is not their usual habitat. They are more used to lightly forested areas. Despite this, they can go without food or water for up to three months. A useful ability, but they are being pushed to their limit. There used to be ten of them. Now there are only five. Every year they are forced further north, and every year the various water and food sources become fewer and fewer. Sometimes they wander blind, hoping to catch the scent of water on the wind, but for three months they have seen nothing but sand rock, and bone. They push forward nonetheless, moving to an oasis that has saved them in the past. During the midday sun, one of the herd falls to the ground. He may need a moment's rest, or he may never get up again. The herd moves on regardless, not bound by social bonds. A full day's march, and they reach the site, only to find desolation. The oasis has dried up. Not even mud remains. Even the vegetation is barely a few dry branches, and all around are the bones of those who try to wait out the endless drought. Soon, even they will be reduced to sand. The herd has no choice but to move on. There is nothing here for them. Their only hope is to continue north. Beneath the sands is a very different animal, a pair of cynodonts sleep in their burrow. They are deep enough in the ground that the heat of the day doesn't reach them, and they have stored food in various parts of their burrow as a sort of larder, taken from the foliage when it was still alive, and the corpses of other animals once they perished. This pair is enough food to last them for a few more weeks, and maybe it will be enough for the rains to arrive. Days pass, and the Scutosaurus herd marches through the desert, Days of endless sand dunes. One of the herbivores wanders off in the wrong direction. The heat and lack of food haven't driven her mad. More days of walking, and they come across what remains of a forest. The still standing trunks of trees, blackened and ashen. One of the Scutosaurus falls through a weakened patch of earth and becomes stuck in a sinkhole. Despite his struggles, he is too weak to pull himself free and the last two remaining herd members struggle on. Another day passes, and the two Scutosaurus disappear amongst the sand dunes. The next day, however, the last female is dead, having collapsed from exhaustion. And only 100 meters away is the body of the last male, who in desperation tried to eat the sand that surrounds him. He died not long after the female. This scene is taking place all over Pangaea, to countless species, and over the course of tens of thousands of years, over 75% of life on land, and up to 95% of life in the oceans, will die out. The greatest mass extinction the world has ever known. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the Permian's Armored Wonder, Scutosaurus. Scutosaurus was a large anapsid reptile that lived in the late Permian era between 259 and 251 million years ago. Its remains were originally discovered in 1899 along the Divina River in Russia and weren't properly named till 1914. Over six mostly complete individuals have been found, as well as many fragmentary remains. 
It reached lengths between 2.5 and 3 metres, stood between 1.5 and 1.7 metres tall, and possibly weighed up to 1.1 tonnes. This makes it one of the largest herbivores from that time, and unlike most reptiles, it walked with its legs held under its body. Most of its body was covered in hard osteoderms or scutes that acted as armour for protection against predators. On the skull, the cheekbones were extended outwards, giving it a distinct look. This may have been used as weapons, or more likely as display features. The skull itself had multiple types of spikes that protruded in different directions. Its legs were broad and strong, however would not have been good for running. It likely had a slow top speed and couldn't keep it up for very long. It also had a massive gut to help it digest tough plants. Stones have been found in their stomachs that would have aided in digestion. Given the arid environment it lived in, Scutosaurus likely would have had to be on the move constantly to find enough to eat. Living alone or in small herds. Now there is a theory that Scutosaurus may have in fact been at least partially aquatic. However, this is quite heavily debated, as there is little evidence for this behaviour, but that doesn't mean it couldn't have fed on water plants if it needed to. Scutosaurus is a great example of how tough you had to be in the Permian era. A thickly muscled herbivore with bone-hard armour plating. A tough opponent even for the largest of carnivores. They are distantly related to modern turtles and tortoises, but I mean very distantly. The history of turtle evolution is muddied at best and badly misunderstood at worst. Scutosaurus would inevitably go extinct at the end of the Permian era, along with most of life on Earth when the Permian-Triassic extinction event occurred, paving way for new species to take over. But what do you think of Scutosaurus? Do you think there is any weight to the semi-aquatic theory, or do you think it was exclusively a lumbering land animal? Let me know what lesser-known creature you'd like me to cover in a future episode, and until then, thank you for watching.